Is Apple falling behind? Well, we're gonna answer that in today's video because we have the iPhone 15 Pro Max right here and Samsung's Galaxy S23 Ultra. And we're gonna compare everything, including the designs, displays, cameras, speakers, performance, overheating, and much more. Getting straight into the designs, the iPhone 15 Pro Max has generally the same design language as we've had since the 11 Pro, but this is the new blue titanium model, and it is really, really dark, almost like a navy blue. I actually kind of like it. The only issue is the fingerprints on the sides. I thought the titanium would get rid of that, but honestly, it almost looks like it has worse fingerprints than the stainless steel on the S23 Ultra. Now, both of them have a curved design, especially on the Samsung, but I love the new curved edges on the 15 Pro Max. It really makes it feel a lot more comfortable in your hands, and it honestly makes it feel thinner than the previous 14 Pro Max, even though it's slightly thicker. Now, compared to this one, they're basically the same in terms of thickness, but I don't like this square design where it kind of digs right into your palm. It kind of gets annoying. This is just such a massive phone compared to the nice, soft, curved edges on the 15 Pro Max. So I've gotta say in terms of comfort, the iPhone is the winner. Now comparing the camera bumps, they both look really, really good. I like how Samsung has this flush glass design with the lenses right on the back. And I really love Apple's as well. It looks really, really clean with this kind of glass step out. And the interesting thing is because of this little glass square, it doesn't look like the camera bump is massive, but in reality, it is huge when you look from the side. So much thicker than the one on the Samsung, even though the Samsung actually has a 10X telephoto lens compared to the new 5X, which Apple achieved some really interesting stuff, which I'm gonna get into in just a minute, and a 200 megapixel main camera on the Samsung compared to 48. So, I mean, Samsung, good job on not having a massive, massive camera bump. Now, one interesting change that I'm noticing this year is that finally, the iPhone is lighter than the Samsung only because of the titanium, making it about 10% lighter. So this is really nice because the Samsung's heavier and it's quite a lot larger. Like it takes up so much more room in your pocket. Now this year, the 15 Pro Max has two big things going for it on the exterior. One of them being the brand new action button, which is actually very unique. Now, the Samsung did used to have the Bixby button, but everybody hated it because all it did was turn on Bixby. So they basically got rid of it. Now you only have the power button and volume buttons, but this action button is very, very cool. Let me show you why. Hey, listen. Yep, I actually mapped the action button to run a shortcut that plays an audio file within the files app. As you can see, I'm in the action button settings. You can see I set it to a shortcut. I set it to run my custom hey, listen, hey, listen. shortcut. Now you can choose a bunch of different things like silent mode, you have focus, camera. You can actually open up the camera and have it go straight to a photo or even a selfie, a video, a portrait, portrait selfie. Very customizable, flashlight, voice memos, short, basically anything you wanna do, this is a really cool and unique feature, and it's gonna be a lot of fun for people who upgrade. And the second big thing is that Apple finally adopted the USB-C port. Now I know a lot of you Android guys are gonna say, yeah, we've had that for years, but guess what? The iPhone actually has a faster USB-C port because it supports 10 gigabit per second transfer speeds, while the Samsung, the S23 Ultra, that's basically more expensive, only five gigabits per second. So Apple actually came out and beat them, going from only USB 2 speeds at 480 megabits per second to 10 gigs per second. And now the cool thing for iPhone users this year is that you could charge a bunch of things with a USB-C port. For example, I just plugged in the AirPods Pro USB-C to lightning cable, really cool. Even better, you can plug in this Razer phone cooler that connects using MagSafe to get rid of all of the overheating issues that people are complaining about on the 15 Pro, which I'm actually gonna get into later on in this video. By the way, this thing gets freezing, freezing cold. 
and you can even charge the S23 Ultra from the iPhone. Now, of course, this thing can basically do all of those things, but it's really cool for iPhone users. Even better, you might not know this, but you could actually plug in a USB-C hub like this. See, it's powering it on. I have an SD card, basically a CF Express card plugged in. We can go into the Files app and there you go, untitled. This thing is showing up even better. Let's plug in this little SD mini card in. There you go, it shows up X8 right there. Basically, you can plug in a ton of different things. There you go, I just plugged in the AirPods. It's all running from the iPhone. This is just awesome. All of that makes me very excited because everybody thought that Apple would limit the crap out of the USB-C port, but they're basically just letting it go free with full support, just like you have on a Samsung or other Android device. Now, while Apple made a great decision switching to USB-C, well, basically the EU forced them to do it. Thank you, EU. They have made some questionable decisions this year, and one of them is getting rid of genuine leather for their cases and giving us this thing, the fine woven case, which is basically like a textile material. Let's take it out right here. All right, looks really cool. And here you go. We have this case, let's plop it on. All right, now, first impressions. It basically feels like a 90s, kind of like windbreaker jacket and like halfway like really fine denim. All around you have this fine woven material. The sides feel kind of like silicone, but it is still fine woven. The big issue is that it still costs $60 and it's nowhere near as premium as Apple's genuine leather cases, which they no longer have. And even worse, a ton of people are complaining online about permanent scratching to the fine woven material, as well as staining with water, dirt, and oils. Basically, it's a terrible decision to buy one of these fine woven cases, just like Apple's terrible decision to get rid of genuine leather. But thankfully, we still have third-party brands who make genuine leather cases, like our sponsor, Nomad, who makes both modern leather cases and folios in a variety of colors like this one, which is rustic brown. Now, they're all MagSafe compatible, and they now come with these super high-quality metal buttons. And for the perfect upgrade kit, you can combine the leather case with one of their GAN chargers like this compact dual port 65 watt for fast charging two phones at once using their ultra premium double braided Kevlar USB-C cables. And you can order them all today using the links in the description below. And now let's get into the displays. The iPhone has the same 6.7 inch display as we had last year. No changes at all in terms of the features while the Samsung has a 6.9 inch, so a larger display. They both have 120 hertz displays with their adaptive refresh rate or pro motion, which is really nice. Nice, but I do like how the Samsung just has that little single hole punch right there at the top compared to the dynamic island, which I will admit is very impressive and useful. Like that, showing up little notifications, whatever else up there. Very nice animations, but the hole punch is more smooth. Now, one thing I do like about the iPhone is the super slim bezels. Look how slim they are compared to the Samsung, especially the top and the bottom. They just stick out like a sore thumb, so good job Apple with these super thin bezels. Now they both get super bright when you manually adjust them to the max, and honestly, right now, the iPhone looks like it's a little bit brighter than the Samsung. And in terms of the peak brightness, the iPhone will go up to 2000 nits compared to around 1750 on the Samsung. And yes, we just went outside and we confirmed that the iPhone display is brighter with full white screens like the Google homepage, as well as ones like The Verge where you got a lot of darks and very bright whites. The iPhone is still brighter in both scenarios. However, when we get into HDR video in YouTube, for some reason, the Samsung is quite a lot brighter for all these HDR scenes, and the colors are actually popping more because of that, so it's doing a better job. I don't know if it's the tuning or what with the software, but no doubt S23 Ultra is winning here. 
And now with the displays out of the way, let's jump into the speaker quality test. All right, wow guys, let me know what you thought down in the comment section below, but to me, the iPhone is actually louder and it sounds better than the S23 Ultra, which is interesting because last year, the S23 Ultra actually destroyed the 14 Pro Max. So this one actually matched the 14 and then exceeded it with a lot more volume, bass, everything sounds very good, clarity, definitely the winner in the speaker test. And now let's jump into the performance testing, starting with Geekbench 6. As you can see, we have the A17 Pro chip right here on the iPhone, clocking at 3.77 gigahertz with eight gigs of RAM. On the Samsung S23 Ultra, we actually have 3.36 gigahertz, so this should theoretically have a lower single core score. But with that said, let's run the CPU test. And there you go, we have our scores, and wow, looks like A17 Pro is still way ahead in the CPU department. In single core, it's four 45% faster, and for multi-core, 36% faster, so definitely way ahead. Let's actually test Speedometer 2.0, the web browser benchmark, to see the web browsing performance. There's our score, and wow, look at that, over twice as fast for general web browsing speed. That might be because the S23 Ultra is using Chrome, and the iPhone's using Safari, which is extremely optimized, made by Apple, so it fully supports all the features. Definitely a winner there. Now going back to Geekbench, let's go ahead and run the GPU benchmark, Metal on the iPhone, Vulcan on the S23. Whoa, this just doesn't make sense right here because we have 27,000 for the iPhone, only 9,000 for the Samsung. So it seems like for some reason Geekbench 6 is not really doing well in terms of cross-platform ability. So let's do another test. Here we have 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme Unlimited Test for both of them, which is very good at utilizing the GPUs for kind of like gaming performance. So let's go ahead and run both of them. We got the results and take a look at that. The Samsung is beating the iPhone in the first test in the GPU ever so slightly, 21 FPS compared to 20.8 on the iPhone, so yes. Apple's A17 Pro GPU is actually falling behind because Samsung's about to have the new Gen 3 coming out very soon. But now I wanna take it a step further with the 20 minute wildlife extreme stress test, which is gonna show us a chart of the actual average FPS going down to see which one's overheating more because there are reports of the A17 Pro overheating quite badly because they've really pushed a lot of wattage to the chip and the GPU in particular. And I got my little thermal seek camera right here to see kind of the difference in temps. Let's go ahead and start this test. Interesting, I'm looking at the FPS right now and the iPhone's actually hitting about 30 FPS, no problem, while this thing's sitting at about 22, 25. So definitely smoother FPS on the iPhone so far. Whoa, it's already going down, 12, 15. It's now under the FPS dramatically than the S23 Ultra. This is really, really weird. Is it really overheating already? All right, now recording the backs, we can see we have a hot spot on the Samsung, about 41 degrees Celsius, pretty hot. Going over to the iPhone, also 41 degrees Celsius right now. So really no differences, but it does look like the heat is more spread out on the Samsung. That's probably because of the vapor chamber cooling, which for some reason Apple is refusing to put on their iPhone. Look at that, 40, it just hit 40 degrees. It looks like Apple's actually throttling the A17 Pro chip more so than the S23 Ultra is. Look at that, still 41. And now if I just watch the FPS right now, the S23 Ultra is running at a higher frame rate. It's clearly 
more smooth. All right, now we only have a couple of minutes left, so what I wanna do is turn these over on the back so that we get a more accurate thermal reading. I'm gonna separate them just a little bit. And now let's look at these temps. Right here, the S23 Ultra, we have 45 degrees Celsius. Then over on here we have, look at that, 45 degrees Celsius. Oh, 44. So it still is kind of throttling a little bit. And once again, look at the heat distribution on that S23 Ultra. The whole thing is spreading the heat, whereas we have a really hot spot on the iPhone, which will tend to give you more throttling because it's all concentrated there. And of course, the S23 Ultra is a little bit bigger, so it can handle more heat with a bigger spread. But look at that, temps are actually going down now. And there you go, the test is finished. And taking a look at this, it actually looks like the iPhone has fared better. First of all, the first test is insanely high for the iPhone, 3,996, basically 4,000 compared to the best loop score of 3,755 for the Samsung. So just a little bit better for the iPhone. However, you get a bigger drop on the iPhone with only stability of 62.5%. That's basically the difference between the best score and the worst score. You can see that huge drop down. You can see as it starts throttling, it goes lower and lower and lower until it finally reverses a little bit at the very end. Whereas with the Samsung, you can see that for the first two tests, it's actually quite even. So it's able to keep the performance higher before throttling and it gradually, gradually goes down to the bottom. And right here, you can see the difference between basically the best loop score and the worst one. And the iPhone definitely drops off lower because of thermal throttling. But in the end, it still has a higher lowest loop score of 2498 compared to 2407. So it looks like the iPhone is still winning. And now let's get into the camera comparison. The really cool new feature on the iPhone, starting with selfies, is this. You'll notice when I put the selfie up to my face, you see this little F button. So if I click it, it actually turns on portrait mode instantly because the AI algorithms actually detected my face. But the coolest part is if you take a regular selfie and then you go into it, you hit edit, you can actually enable portrait mode by moving this slider. There you go, portrait is working from a regular photo. Now you can actually change the focus point of the portrait mode, which is really, really awesome. However, the S23 Ultra actually has better quality because it has a 40 megapixel selfie camera compared to just 12. You can see instantly that the quality is a lot better on the Samsung, so it definitely wins for selfies. And now moving on to the ultra wide camera, if I take a look and get a little bit closer on Max right here, you'll notice a couple of things. First of all, the HDR is better on the iPhone because of Smart HDR5. You could actually see this little building behind him. And for some reason, the Samsung has this kind of washed out gray look, almost like a kind of haze from the room, making everything look a little bit gray. But the quality is actually better, as far as I can tell, on the Samsung for ultra wides. But now let's get into the new 5X camera on the 15 Pro Max. This actually lets you do 5X portraits, which you can see right here, just looking at them. This looks like a professional DSLR portrait with 120 millimeter focal length. This looks absolutely amazing with the depth, how it kind of rolls off towards the back. This does look pretty nice, but it does kind of seem like it's a smartphone shot. And as you get closer, you can see there's a little bit issues with the portrait mode. And if I get really close and zoom in on his face, you can see that the HDR is not working so well on the Samsung. His face looks all like really flat, doesn't look that good. The detail is kind of missing. The darks are just kind of crushed. Whereas this looks absolutely incredible. The highlight roll up on his face, it looks very natural. And the detail in the hair, incredible. 
for the 5X lens, of course, compared to the 3X portrait. And of course, because we're comparing 3X to 5X, this one's a little bit further away. So what I did is I stepped closer to kind of match the framing. And as you can see, the 5X lens just has a lot more compression in the back where everything just kind of gets larger behind you, where the body get, kind of gets smaller in front. It just looks very, very nice and natural compared to a little bit of distortion because the focal length is not as high. Now, moving on, this is a 1X portrait, which both of them can do. However, the iPhone now defaults to 24 megapixel photos with the main sensor instead of 12 like on the Samsung. So if I do some pixel peeping and really zoom in, on his face, right away you can see more detail on the iPhone. The hair stands out, everything looks a little bit more natural, especially with the HDR making his face. The, the, the lighting just look more natural compared to these kind of like highlight spots. And you can see kind of like some compression artifacts in the face as well. And then this right here is using the 10X camera on the S23 Ultra, which is a big advantage for it compared to the 5X, which I digitally zoomed up to 10. You could definitely see that we have higher quality on the S23 Ultra, all the hair, definitely better quality, but we still have that same issue of his face looking very, very flat because the HDR and processing is just not as good as what the iPhone can do with Smart HDR5. And then here we have a far range shot showing off the difference for kind of detail and text. You can see the 10X right over here. Definitely an insane amount of extra detail on the S23 Ultra's 10X camera. And by the way, this is actually a 25X set on both of them. And here we just went all out. This is 100X on the S23 Ultra and 25X, which is the maximum for the iPhone. So if we actually zoom in and try to match up the framing of both of them, you could see that the iPhone just looks terrible. You can barely even tell that it's a building compared to the Samsung. It looks a lot better for far range. And here we're comparing the 50 megapixel camera on the Samsung compared to 48, which is HEIF Max on the iPhone. So once again, let's do some pixel peeping. And as it turns out, the iPhone's 48 megapixel looks to be a little bit better than the 50 on the Samsung. And then here, we're actually testing the 200 megapixel camera mode on the S23 Ultra. So let's zoom in really close. And surprisingly, the iPhone actually isn't that far off. It's really, really close right here. You do see more kind of like smoothing and compression artifacts here, over sharpening on the iPhone but I do think the 200 is a little bit better. And then finally, I decided to do a 10X low light shot, which basically we had a lot of the lights off, taking a look at the detail, and it looks like the Samsung actually turns off the 10X camera and uses a crop from the main. And as you can see, the iPhone has more noise, but it's definitely more detailed because the 5X lens has a f2.8 aperture, so it can actually stay on and collect enough light with low light compared to the 10X, which is like f4.8 or 4.9, it just doesn't get enough light, so it just shuts off, switches to the main. Now, of course, these are just a couple of tests, but I do wanna mention that we're gonna be doing a full unbiased camera comparison with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the S23 Ultra, and the Pixel 7 Pro, looking at which camera is the best in 2023. So definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on that. And now with all that said and tested, let's finally answer the original question. Is Apple falling behind compared to the S23 Ultra? And honestly, I'm kind of liking it. I was expecting to get worse performance in that stress test. It actually beat it out. We have the new action button. We have USB-C, which is now faster, twice as fast than on the S23 Ultra. I'd argue you have a better design language that fits more comfortably in your hand. You have the dynamic island and the camera is better in multiple ways. So with that said, I've got to say I'm giving the win to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, of course, we're getting the new S24 Ultra very soon, so we'll have to see when that comes out and do this test again. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, click the circle above to subscribe. Definitely check out the links for the Bataka cases down below, and one of those great videos right over there. 
Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.